Japan's first-person zombie puncher Dying Light has been out for around a week now, albeit only in digital download form. And here at Eurogamer, we've got varying opinions on how good the game actually is. I, for instance, think it's a bit of a stinker. While I think it's quite good, actually, so is Dying Light an absolute delight, or should it just be left to rot? So, for starters, I'm not a fan of Dying Light's characters, who are your typical Techland, Dead Island fare. None are particularly likeable, most are incredibly forgettable, and a couple are utterly teeth-grindingly aggravating. Not once did I find myself rooting for the survivors, especially Rahim. He's one of many characters I'd like to kick off the tower. <laughs> Well hang on, that's a bit extreme. Okay, the dialogue isn't the best, but I actually found the characters to be fairly memorable. They're driven in spite of their awful situation, but they're also vulnerable and human. They get a decent amount of characterization too, giving you the sense of warring personalities forced to pull together. I actually wanted to help them out, which isn't a feeling I often get in games like this. But doesn't the shonky voice acting ruin the illusion for you? The voice acting is just plain bad and it kind of breaks the immersion for me. A lot of the supporting cast sound like their lines have been phoned in from people who work in the office. Ah, my friend. Rice likes you, I can tell. Especially our main man Crane, the cookie-cutter video game protagonist who's voiced like any other generic American video game hero. Basically, Roger Craig Smith, who's famous for being the voice of Ezio in AC Brotherhood, is who studios on a budget get if they can't afford to cast Nolan North or Troy Baker. Yeah, Crane out. Okay, yes, he does sound a bit Chris Generico, but they're doing the best they can with the script they've got, which, again, isn't very well written. You could have an all-star cast of Hollywood's best and the lines would still sound wooden. What's more, I think you're overlooking the voice acting that went into the zombies. That stuff is pretty great. Yeah, the creepy moans and groans do go a long way towards giving the game some much needed personality, but my main criticism is that what made Dead Island interesting, its dopey charm, is missing. The characters in Dead Island were way worse than Dying Light, but they were just stupid enough to be entertaining. In Dying Light, they're all proud citizens of Mediocreville, which incidentally is exactly where the combat in this game lives. Seriously, if you've hit one zombie around the head with a truncheon in this game, you've hit them all. The First-person combat is just dull. I know you're actively supposed to avoid most confrontations, hence all the parkour, but what's the point of having a zombie game if you're discouraged from killing zombies? And then when you do get in a scrap with them, especially in the early portions of the game where your weapons are weak, it takes a million blows to take them down. Fighting zombies shouldn't be a hassle to be avoided, it should be fun. I think this one's down to personal preference, really. I like the fact it takes ages to kill a zombie. I feel like I need to pick my fights carefully because I can be easily overrun if I'm not careful. There have been times when I've spent ages trying to isolate a zombie because they're carrying a weapon I want, but I know I'm not strong enough to face all his corpulent buddies. Sure, the combat isn't exactly thrilling, but I think putting the emphasis on being agile and picking when to fight and when to run was both bold and refreshing. Not many AAA titles are willing to take that gamble. That's a fair point, and I would agree with you if I didn't think that the parkour was too weak to base the main crux of the game on. I feel like the game relies on you following set pre-planned parkour routes. If you follow these routes, you can navigate the city pretty well and quite fast, but decide to stray and work out your own path, and you'll find yourself struggling to navigate the environment without falling on your ass and wasting five minutes climbing back to the start again. Really? Okay, sometimes I'll miss a ledge or two, but generally I've felt free to explore at all times and it's gone pretty well. I haven't really been aware of any set routes. Are you sure you're not just crap at parkour? That definitely is a possibility, but you can't tell me you've not found the parkour a little iffy compared to something like Mirror's Edge. Crane lacks Faith's graceful flow around the environment, and it's often hard to tell what is a good ledge and what isn't. Well, I'll concede it's not as good as Mirror's Edge, but it's still one of the better examples of first-person parkour. But good parkour isn't worth much if the sandbox you're exploring isn't any fun. Dying Light has all the ingredients that make Far Cry games such awesome playgrounds, but the framework and gameplay stop it being as much fun. Take the night gameplay for example, it's pretty terrifying until you realise there are literally no penalties for dying. 
I wouldn't want them to be insta-fail stealth sections, that would be even more aggravating, but at least punish us a little if we're killed by the volatiles. All that happens is you're walked back to the nearest safe house, so if you accidentally stay out until the night time, you can just stroll up to a volatile, take a paddle in, and then wake up in a safe house and skip to daytime. Could have been terrifying, ends up as a creepy warp zone for people who can't be asked to make their own way to a safe zone. Well firstly, Far Cry has no real penalty for dying either, and I don't hear you complaining about that. And second, you should be asked to make your way to a safe zone. Presumably you're playing a video game to have fun, so why not play the game? I agree it doesn't really punish you enough for dying, but that shouldn't mean you need to roll over and accept death every time you come up against a volatile. You shouldn't need to be threatened into having fun for fear of losing all your stuff. Is this you being crap at parkour again? No, this is me saying that when there's nothing to lose, the tension is all gone, and there's no real need to play the section unless a mission specifically asks you to. True fear in games comes from having something to lose. I'm a sucker for feeling threatened in games, it's why I love the daisies of the world. While it's true Far Cry has no penalty for dying, it's a different type of game. It's arcade action, not wannabe horror, so the atmosphere doesn't suffer. Dying Light's night gameplay could have been the high point of the game, but in my opinion, these designs flaws rob it of all tension. I'd love a nail-biting stealth challenge here, but I'm also incredibly lazy, and if I can find a way to shortcut a game, I'm gonna take it. Basically, Ian, what I'm taking from this is we should never play co-op games together. At least not ones made by Techland. Suits me fine. Anyway, what do you lot think? Stick your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more from Eurogamer. Thanks for watching.